Okay, so Felix, my art rep, sent me a big package, and I know what it is, but I wanted to open it in front of everybody. Let me get my YouTube page up here so I can answer questions. slow today. I hope that's not the case. I just typed in YouTube and it's taking a very long time to go there, so. Okay. Hey everybody. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to not dox myself. So if you remember uh, a few weeks ago, a lot of weeks ago, four weeks ago, however long it was, I uh, did a little piece of Grendel Tales, Devils and Deaths, um, because that was for someone who gave me a uh, color guide done by the actual artist of the series. So it's the first time I'm looking at it. Pretty awesome. I'm totally gonna hang it up in my studio. Um, it looks like it looks like so. It looks like there's like an overlay of like just a clear. There's like a clear layer of line art of, of line art, and then the color is done. It looks like on like watercolor paper underneath. So I don't actually know. Hold on. Don't actually know if this is the official. I'm gonna. There's a letter here. I'm not gonna read it out loud, but I'm gonna read it so I, I make sure I don't get it wrong. So this is Ma M Matt Hollingsworth's official colors to the book, which he did. That is amazing. And this is from John. Thank you, Card, for the wonderful card and the wonderful gift. So that was a thank you from uh, that, that, that the Grendel piece I did was like a little thank you for this gift because Felix told me about it but how cool is this thank you so much John fantastic this is gonna go up in my studio I'm not sure where because there's no room but I'm going to find a spot um, all right let's see what else we have here see here we have a pretty big piece of cardboard because I got something else in the mail oh, okay. this is the original art to murder Falcon issue 8 of the cover that was done none other by the great Paul Pope so it's my, not my first Paul Pope piece of original art, but it is probably my favorite Paul Pope piece that I've done. And thank you so much, Paul. Uh, it's awesome. This is the cover of issue eight, which is the variant cover, which is um, Motley Crue's uh, To Hell with the Devil. Uh, 
Yes, this is like a little variant cover off the play of that, and uh, just love the outfit that Murder Falcon's in. I mean, it's amazing. So I just wanted to show everybody this. I'm sure the glare is going to har harm the. But that is a fantastic piece. So, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Felix. I also got some other art in the mail. Let's see what we got here. So, first up is an original piece of mine from Murder Falcon. <laughs> um, I asked Felix if I could have this. This is the only piece of original art that I still have from Murder Falcon. Um, I sent it to Felix, and after thinking about it for a long time, I wanted to keep it. So. This is the only piece that I kept from the whole series. I don't think I'll ever sell it, but it's probably my one of my favorite pieces from the series, mostly because I am not good at drawing houses and I was very proud of the house that I drew, so I figured it'd be a good piece to keep. And let's see. Here is an original from Aubrey Sitterson and Tyrell Cannon's Beef Brothers. I'm actually going to take this one out of this protector because I, my hands are not dirty. I haven't started inking yet too much today, so. This is uh, an amazing piece. I love the clothesline. I'm a big clothesline fan, as you guys know, so. wanted to show you that. Thank you, Tyrell. Oh my gosh, come on. This is done as a thank you for doing a pinup of Beef for, of beef Bros to kind of help them with their promotional aspect of their Kickstarter campaign. So, I did my best on that, but I was like having a really rough art day, so it's definitely a worthy trade. Sorry, Tyrell. Here we have, this piece is insane, a commission from... Mati Mat Matthias Bergara, sorry, Mat Mat Matthias, Matthias, sorry, bro, I'm destroying your name. I'll meet you someday, and you can school me. Um, isn't that incredible? So this is an original. I'm. Sh I wonder what he used here. I mean, I. I think there's like. I'm almost sure there's like some like uh, nib work and I can see like there's some some uh, some brush work like right there some dry brush you can see on the back too like the watercolor like spilled over to the edges which I think is really cool this is a piece that I will prize forever thank you so much brother oh, what else you got so feel some I'll, you know I sometimes so I participate in these art drops that Felix will do my art rep and just like everybody else, I'm like clicking, trying to get, trying to buy uh, pieces. So sometimes I'm lucky, sometimes I'm not. Um, it's a ple uh, piece from Hellblazer that I just thought was awesome. I love that middle panel. This is also by Matthias, Mat Matthias, Matthias, oh God, sorry. Um, just a fantastic piece. Really, really well done. Really messy gross i'm into it this this texture the whiteout texture it looks like it was used it was done with this presto i could be wrong but i'm like almost sure this is like not acid free and will probably like break down terribly but it's already starting to yellow which i actually really like so those of you who have commissioned me i'm sure you will get some yellowing and i totally forgot that i got this <laughs> 
I was just like furiously like, I want that one, I want that one when I was getting it. But this is a Zorro piece also by Matias. How amazing is that? Regar is one of these artists that's so good that it's a little scary and you're like reminded of just how precious line making really is. And it's the highest compliment I think I can give to a, a, an illustrator, so well done, sir. Here is another piece by Matias. This is a double page spread, I believe. I don't actually even know what this is from. Immortal Hulk, number 28. Just look at this. What? Look at those lines. If you get too close, they don't make any sense. You pull out. Good God. Incredible. Just incredible. An honor to have this piece in my collection. Um, man, how do I draw like this? I need to draw, start drawing like this. It's so incredible. It's so chunky. His face. It's just like, God, perfect. Perfection. It doesn't get much better than that. I saw it and I had to have it. So, there's some of my recent pieces. Uh, you can see the studio's caving on itself. There's the Transformers red figure. Do not recommend these, they are not very good. But, alright. I'm trying to think if there's anything else here. One thing that I have been finding is that I've been getting a lot of fan art, especially when we still did shows. Remember those? Uh, got a lot of fan art, so I want to dedicate an entire uh, episode to just like people's fan art. So I am going to do my best to try and do that. The only thing is, like, so many pieces of fan art that have been done, I've kept every single one of them, but. Uh, there's just a signature. There's no like contact info on the back or anything like that. So I have like no way to contact these people and I can't really read signatures. So um, I'm not telling anybody to do fan art of my stuff, but if you're a fan or you're thinking about maybe gifting me <laughs> with some fan art, that sounds really weird to say. I don't mean it to, to be weird, but uh, make sure to put all your contact info on the back of it. So that way if I ever want to share it, or I want to tweet about it or whatever in the future someday. Just does not hurt to like have your Twitter or email on there so I can reach out and make sure to tag you in it. Just saying. I hope that's not awkward to say. Whatever. People do fan art. It's a thing. Just uh, when you do it, put your contact info on so I can reach out. And even just to say thanks. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the drawing board, shall we? Just a moment here. Are we upside down? Yes, we are upside down. And we are very dark, so just allow me to some magic here. Yeah, that's a lot better. Uh, and I should really have this all figured out by now, but you guys know me. Just gonna flip this around. Alright. Alright, let's do this. 
So today we're working on a beta ray build page, and uh, we're looking, working on like kind of like a weird like Catholic like structure, I guess. Um, and my vanishing point is all the way down here. Got my little X here. I got my rulers. I've also covered the spoiler images because there are characters on here that will show up that I do not want to let anybody know what they are, but I figured. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and look at some. Zoom in a little bit here. There we go. I'm gonna go back and look at some comments here. See what I can see. Pablo, how's the Beta Ray Bill project going? Beta Ray Bill is going very well. Thank you. Uh, Tim Dolan says, Daniel, got my 1976 Les Paul Custom today, and I'm so excited to plug it in. It's going to be stellar. Murder Falcon inspired me to pull the trigger. Hell yeah, my dude. Way to go, Tim. Have we ever met before? If we have never met, make sure next time you see me to talk about your guitars. Hey, Brad. Hey, Jesper. Doing okay, man. Hey, Gaston. Hey, Jim. Pablo, uh, as far as Matthias, Matthias and like his spin on stuff, I want to see that too. Dylan, I appreciate the support, bro. I wanted to do another image book, but um, I just did not. I uh, wanted to kind of play it safe with the pandemic, if that makes sense. <laughs> Alejandro, hello, Serbia. Wow. What's up? Hey, Charlie. Thank you. Hello, Ignacio. Hey, JP. Near west side of Chicago. Represent. What's up, man? Nicolo, how are you, man? Thought I was thinking about Italy today. Some of the publishers from... Uh, uh, the publishers that published Murder Falcon in Italy... Uh, they sent me a huge block of Parmesan cheese from Tuscany. <laughs> hey, JR. Samuel Trejo, there'll be a follow-up to Space Mullet when I can figure out how to monetize it. I know that sounds awful and capitalist, but there's just no other way to say it. Alejandro, I'm glad you're excited. Hey, Daniel, hope you're well, too. Naked Grave, hello, France, how are you? CJB, what's up, man? CJB, I don't know how to tell you my address without doxing myself on the internet. Tell me what to do. I would love to. I would love to have it though. Dylan, no list this year for sure. No, I still have like thirty-five to do. Uh, what's up, Jay? All right, caught up on comments. I don't know if anybody cares about this, but. So there's a lot of lines going on here right now. One thing I like to do is I will give myself, I don't like sitting just playing with a ruler all the time. That's no fun for me. Um, so what I will do is I'll like find lines that are like really important to making everything seem like I'm using a ruler. So what I'm what I mean by that is here I've got my vanishing point all the way at the bottom of the page here. There's some there's some lines on this page that just really need to be right. And when I say right, I mean like vanish like going to the vanishing point exactly. So I like this one. So like for instance, this pillar right here, 
like if I finoodle just like free form on the inside, it's not a huge deal. But that means that the outsides really need to be solid. So I'll just take my ruler, take my longer ruler here. Get it all matched up. And I'll just take the time to really make sure. that it just is all correct. There's a few, maybe a few lines on the inside too. Okay, so now that I have that, I have a little bit of reference here that I've been using. So I kinda will have this next to me. But for the most part, I will just, now I can just go in and I can kind of do my thing. So you see I'm like still being pretty messy, but it's like still turning out okay. Um, now when I go back and I kind of finalize everything towards the end, I will, if something doesn't look right, I may pull out a little white out and I'll like pull the ruler out and I'll just kind of play with it until everything is looking correct. So I need to do the same thing down here. So here I know my foundation is solid. And I'm just doing all my homework and then I can play here so I'm, I'll like I'll do like I'll do a ruler if like here's like a building right like I'll use a ruler for uh, see I'm like drawing a building I'll use a ruler for this line this line this line and maybe this line and this line and then I'll start just going crazy so I'm like taking little bits and not getting too crazy with the ruler because if you use a ruler for everything, it starts looking kind of uh, boring. That's why I don't like Manga Studio or like one of the reasons why I don't like doing digital stuff is it's very hard to make it look like I didn't use a perspective grid. Looks too digital and I know there's ways to do it where it doesn't look like that, I just have no desire to learn. I would prefer the old school way. So, and now we can just start faking. Oh, that's awesome, Nicola. Thanks, Dylan. This is from Beta Ray Bill. Um, another thing I like to do is I like to add a little texture. So I'll follow the vanishing point line uh, with my Charlie Steele, I love Walworth's pedals. I had the make I had the Mako uh, D1 for a little while, and I really liked it. But then I saw another pedal that I wanted more, so I, I sold that one and uh, I got a different one. <laughs> That's kind of what I do, though. I kind of wheel and deal. Also, my uh, my wife and I we are trying to afford a house. We're trying to buy a house now, so uh, I've been. I, I, uh, I have a budget for, for like guitar stuff now or like for like a fun I have like a fun budget and so not as many guitar pedals are being bought sadly 
which is sucks because like Nam, all the music releases of the year is starting to come out. So it's good though. It keeps me keeps me from just buying crap I don't need because I have a, a lot of guitar pedals. Tim, what's on my guitar rack right now? Hey, Sean. What's on my guitar rack right now? I just bought a new guitar, actually. Um, my dad. My dad got me a uh, gift certificate to one of my favorite guitar shops in here in Chicago. And so I helped, I used it to help fund a little bit of, um, uh, a little bit of this guitar, which is like a Charvel <laughs> DK24 with like gold hardware, like all the bling you could imagine. Um, nice. Just It's been too long since I bought a guitar with a Floyd Rose, especially one that's gold. So that's the newest thing on the rack. I have too many guitars. It's a problem. Yeah. Also, I forgot I need to Google Image Centipede.
Tim Dolan, uh, I understand the uh, trim, uh, the tremolo uh, distaste. I get it, but I just you know I love my I love my whammy bars. Um, hey Keith, Alejandra, I will. I'll tell you about that in a second. Nightshade, uh, this is a page from Beta Ray Bill. Bye, Dylan. Samuel, it will be a uh, monthly book, five issues. Tim, I've never tried anything with Evertune systems. Keith, nope, just like regular Marvel comics. Um, no, no double. I wish, but um, it's okay because I kind of needed something a little more chill than like a forty-four page epic, like uh, every issue of Wonder Woman: Dead Earth. <laughs> I wouldn't say I was getting burned out, but I, I was getting. Uh, you know, it's it it's a lot of it's a lot of work. Tim, that's awesome. All right, so while I'm drawing, I'll, I'll tell everybody about my first guitar, which I'm sure everybody cares very deeply about. It was a PB Telecaster, black with a maple fretboard. I think it was a maple fretboard. I actually can't remember about the fretboard now. And it was maybe about 300 bucks. My dad bought it for me because my dad, my dad like always wanted to learn how to do an instrument, and I think he regretted not learning when he was younger. Um, so he was very he was very encouraging of me to like play the piano, and then um, I didn't really take to the piano. So my dad was like, "Do you think you'd be into guitar?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, sure." And I knew I wanted uh, to be into guitar because I saw. A picture of Kurt Cobain playing. I was homeschooled and uh, we had like a uh, musical encyclopedia book that um, I always looked at which had like the history of music and the last chapter was like on developing rock and roll. This is like 2001 maybe um, and they had a picture of Kurt Cobain on the In Utero tour and I was like mom who's this? She's like, oh, you don't, you don't want to know who that guy is. <laughs> it's like, oh, now I really want to know. Um, and 
one thing led to another, and so I like, started getting into guitar. But then I saw a, uh, I really wanted a, I'd always wanted a Stratocaster, because that's what Kurt Cobain played. Um, so I like, after about a year of learning how to play, I was like, okay, I want a Strat. So I took my Tele in, and like, it was a great guitar, you know. And my dad's like, why are you gonna, what are you doing? And I was like, I want a Strat. He's like, this guitar is fine. Everybody told me I was crazy. Because I wanted to turn this in, in this amazing, like, PV guitar for a crappy Squire Strat. And, you know, they don't, the saying, they don't make them like they used to, does not apply to 90s and early 2000 guitars. Uh, those Squires back in the day were truly awful. Awful, awful guitars. And uh, but I didn't care. I wanted to. I wanted a Strat, just something that looked like a Strat. And of course, I regretted it a year later. But back then, it was all about the look. You know, whatever would get me to play. So I wonder where that. I wonder where that. Uh, that PV telly is. Another thing that was hard to get that was good was like good tone from like an amplifier. I remember I had this like PV amplifier and it was just a piece of trash, like total solid state. It was really hard to get like a good, and now it's just everywhere, you know, like practice amps that sound like a million bucks. Thanks Samuel. The earliest effects pedal that I can remember Oh Tim, that's so sad. Hey comic crack. My first guitar pedal was a you guessed it, a uh, boss DS1 that my uncle Glenn gave me. He was not playing a ton of guitar at the time. He's like, you just should have this, you know. I, I'm not using it, and I still have it. Still a great guitar pedal. Nick, when did you get your first Tube Screamer? Because I bought a Tube Screamer in 2005 or six, and it's still going. And I still use it all the time. Put it in front of like my metal amps to kind of give it that boost, you know?
2002 or three. Okay, resale. Ian, I'm um, I'm doing a beta ray bell page today. Great versatility. Also, you know, I never really appreciated, like, I mean, I, I knew it always sounded good, but I, I could never really know why. And now that I have a little bit more of, like, a discerning ear, you know, I just, like, I never really knew how good mids could be, you know? And now I know, and it's like, man, why does that sound so good? It's like, oh, the mids. So here, things are getting a little sloppy, so we'll just do a quick. We're getting out into no man's land. You see there's not a lot of lines out here for me to go off. So it helps me, this helps me be precise while also not being a robot. Oh, and you make mistakes like that. Sorry, I don't know. Stupid camera keeps focusing on my hand and not the drawing. Sorry about that.
Alejandro was my idea, but it took a few years to come around. First issue of Beta Ray Bill drops in March. Tim, it's kind of like the stars need to be aligned, so I think, you know, working on Wonder Woman and going to do that didn't hurt. Um, but I was actually supposed to do Beta Ray Bill before Wonder Woman, and I was talking with Marvel about it a bunch. Um, and, uh, you know, the money was better at DC at the time to do Wonder Woman there, so I went with that. Um, and then, like, I very casually kind of, uh, you know, booped Marvel about it, about coming back to it over at, uh, you know, when things were like, just when the pandemic was like just starting to like really rev up, um, I was like, I, I was pretty sure it wasn't going to happen because of the pandemic, like nobody, you know, back when like we didn't know anything. Like, oh, uh, is, like, the whole world going to shut down? You know, that kind of thing. So they said it was on, and then it wasn't on. Uh, things, it, like, the, you know, we just got this huge yellow light. Mostly red light, but, you know, they're like, there's still a possibility, but it's probably not going to happen. Because of coronavirus. And they were pulling back. At that time, Marvel was pulling back books, and which is understandable. So then it wasn't going to happen. And then I emailed them again when Diamond started coming back into business sometime in June, I think it was. I don't remember exactly. And uh, it was they they were like, yeah, we're, we're you know we're kind of back in business or like ready like we kind of figured out the working from home thing and like, are comics still going to be happening? Yes, they are. People are still buying comics, thank goodness. Um, and then we kind of moved forward from there. So, you know, there was multiple times where we, we, I thought it was going to happen, and it didn't, and then multiple times where I thought it wasn't going to happen, and it did. So it's just kind of all over the place. Nick, um, I have had a little bit of contact. Uh, we've shared a few emails, but mostly just about marketing stuff. But part of issue one is going to actually be me interviewing Walt um, about his first run on Beta Ray Bill. So that should be really fun. That's going to be like two pages in issue one that Marvel is uh, going to be putting together. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I get to send Walt Simonson email interview questions, and I'm totally going to ask him what kind of pen he used. <laughs> oh. And I'm not even kidding about that. I, I, I am going to ask him that. And then I don't know how I'm going to, like, how do you feel about me just taking this character and run, and, like, I'm j definitely trying to respect the character, but, you know, I've got my own vision, so I don't know if he'll even read it. I hope he reads it. 
I did meet him once at New York Comic Con. The poor guy was like off trying to use the bathroom. He's like, oh man, you got me right as I was about to go to the bathroom. And I was like, oh dude, go use the bathroom. And he's like, no, I have time for one more signature. <laughs> I'm a big fan, man. It's like, oh, thanks, dude. This is a long time ago. So. Now I can sell. No, but now I can say, oh yeah, we met one time, and you were kind enough to sign my book before you had to run to the bathroom. <laughs> I was actively trying to avoid that uh, just because like uh, I I didn't feel like I could reach that with um, Batman and uh, Superman because I felt like those stories had already been done with those characters so I wasn't like trying to do like a Dark Knight Returns thing I just um, I just was trying to make a book that I would want to read you know, because, like, I just have never really been into Wonder Woman. And I know a lot of my peers feel the same. And a lot of the artists that I admire their work, you know, like, when we think about what gets us excited about comics and storytelling, Wonder Woman just isn't on the list. So, I was like, can I make a... Is it? Would it be possible for me to make a story where me, I could, like, if I were to read it, I would be excited about it. So that became the goal, and then that kind of helped form the aesthetic of the book. From that on. Jim, I'm uh, listening to the latest Springsteen record. I really love it. I'm a big Springsteen fan. I've also, have you been listening to uh, Unleash the Archer's Apex record? Tim, I think I should be on there soon. I hope they have me on. I'll bug Ryan about it. I'm trying to get Marvel to make a PDF copy of the book so we can get it out to, you know, different people but I'm thinking of spe specifically right now of 11 o'clock comics Keith, I have I have a um, new frontier. I just haven't had a chance to read it, but I've been wanting to. I've been on a Darwin Cook kick lately. Jim, awesome. Oh, is there going to be a new Gojira record? I didn't know that. Unleash the Archers record is probably my favorite record of 2020. I had such a good time. I have been having such a good time listening to that record. I'm still spinning it like once a week.
time I die. Yeah, I think it's the guitarist. He's uh, the butcher from the Butcher and the Blade tag team, which is awesome. <laughs> How cool is that? You know, what do you do? Oh yeah, I am. Uh, I'm in this band. Every time I die, and uh, I also do pro wrestling on the side. <laughs> It's just so badass. Kate Blue, any quick tips or exercises on how to draw a comic book figure drawing? Yeah, get a sketchbook and uh, figure draw for at least a half hour every day. Set a timer. It's best if you can ha if you have like live models. Obviously, that's kind of difficult right now. Um, but there's a lot of like online resources for figure drawing for like figures or even you no know, just like any sort of models on Instagram or you know social media, whatever the internet, and just sketch away. Try and do. Um, gesture drawings first start with gesture drawings so don't allow yourself to work on the same image for more than a minute so you do like 10 of those do that for 10 minutes and then move on to like a, a drawing for five pick a drawing and do uh, do a, a draw for that figure for one drawing for five for five minutes so what are we at 15 minutes Maybe do like two five minute ones and then do one 15 minute drawing where you're really kind of taking your time. It sounds uh, kind of crazy, but just like exercise, just like, like weightlifting, doing anything, you have to be able to draw the boring stuff before you can like push it like a comic book. And the more you know what lies underneath, the better you're going to be at drawing it when you have to like go all out. So that's what I recommend. It's not exactly fun. It's kind of like playing the guitar to a metronome. Um, but after about a month, I guarantee you will see results. If you stick with it. Also, if you don't have time to do that, you know, I like to find little things that I can get better at uh, with in the context of like anatomy within the context of like drawing comics so like for instance um, I really struggle with uh, I really struggle with this part of the body right now like, I don't really know what's going on so whenever I have a character that's in any sort of pose like this I like research the heck out of it I pull out all my anatomy books I just do my very best to try and figure out what is this and I'll draw this crap out of it like with my pencil and I'll like really render it out and like try and figure it out and I'll just like ink right over it with a t-shirt <laughs> uh, but then I just it's just like a little exercise that I do for the for that moment which really helps me uh, you know and then sometimes I might do that with hands you know like I'll really like figure out the bones and the hands and you know I'll like I'll like really draw it all out and then ink right over it because the character's like wearing a glove or whatever I don't, I don't do that for everything though. You know, I'll just pick like one thing that I know I need work on. Um, so. And I've been, the pandemic's kind of gotten to me. I've, I've been kind of down about art and stuff lately. So I've been trying to, I haven't been trying. I haven't been trying very hard, so. I'm trying to get back into the swing of like really pushing myself. Which is why I'm doing this friggin' crazy ass drawing here. This is me really gunning. I'm gunning. I'm a 
like really pushing it here. Thanks, Aaron. Oh, JB's telling me, JB Rose telling me to um, talk about my podcast that I did, which drops on Monday. I talked with the Gutter Boys. Uh, it was awesome. Thanks for having me on, JB. We talk about wrestling a lot. <laughs> talk about Beta Ray Bill a little bit. wrestling and music right on Thanks, JB. I appreciate that. Keith, I don't think they're going to do a hardcover for Murder Falcon because it did not sell very well. Unfortunately. Which sucks. Doesn't that suck? It's the book I'm most proud of that it sold the worst. <laughs> Actually, no. Space Mullet sold worse than Murder Falcon. And that's okay. I need to get a ratty brush for fire texture. Never listen to Mild High Club. That makes sense, Tim. I don't watch WWE. Right on, JR. Yeah. I'm really happy with Murder Falcon. Yeah, sorry I've been gone so long, Doug. 
I just I just like do video stuff whenever I have time. It's just basically what it comes down to. And I just have not had time. Our daughter is uh, in daycare once a week, and we had like a COVID scare in er early January. I say scare. It's not like this is something I'm not used to now. <laughs> oh, somebody got COVID. Ah, everybody get test. You just never know when it's gonna happen. When the preschool when the preschool owner just sends everybody a mass email, you're just like, oh god, here it comes, here it comes. We regret to inform you that someone in your classroom, your daughter's classroom, has contracted COVID. Your child's classroom. <laughs> we are shutting down for two weeks. <laughs> so it's the new reality. So it wasn't really a scare because we're like, well, she's not sick. Or not that we know of. Get a test, do the rigmarole, do the quarantine, and repeat. This is what it is. But then I'm on dad duty more often, and the drawing time gets shortened, and so on and so forth. As everybody, I'm sure, has had experience, some experience in. Kid or no kid. So, try and do, one, do it one step at a time. One day at a time. Awesome, Benjamin. The ink is not thinned out um, because it's just textural stuff, so I'm only using a little bit. I actually have to go because my wife needs to use the camera. She's doing a cocktail thing. She's doing like a cocktail live stream thing, so I have to kind of roll. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Oh, before you go, I'll, do, I'll give you a little quick fun preview of Beta Ray Bill. Basically like a fabulous cutaway of the entirety of Scuttlebutt. No spoilers, there's no spoilers here or anything. Just thought you guys would want to see it. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Here, I'll show you one more thing. This is for the wrestling fans. There's 
first Beta Ray Bill hitting a clothesline on a guy. <laughs> I'm having fun with it. <laughs> Rainmaker. Yeah, oh yeah. Rainmaker. It's a blast to draw. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys and gals. Thank you, people. Thank you, my friends. Yes, of course. You're so welcome. Everybody take care. I'll try and be on a little more often. I just come on when I can. So, uh, yeah, let's talk soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.